Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you how to use Scalar 2 inside a number of products like Zambits, GarageBand, AUM, Cubase 3. Of course, I'm not going to give you all the possible different use cases, but something to get you started and use Scalar 2 inside those products. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start loading Zenbit first. As you can see, it is loading up nicely. And when it is loaded, let's choose a template loop builder song like so. So it goes inside this view where we are using the uh, drums on the first track. So let's choose something like uh, a pattern. And let's go for disco drum. The first one will do. And let's click play. fine that sounds okay and let's close that and let's also minimize the view of uh, the drums okay so the first thing you would do if you want to use scalar 2 is to click on the plus sign and select instrument track okay in this case let's uh, go through the list of plugins and um, we're going to change to select Scalar 2 here, you can use Scalar 2, the lighter edition, which doesn't have a routing or routing to MIDI and audience. Okay, so I'm going to select the lighter edition for now. Okay, I wait for that to load up and I maximize the screen. Here I'm going to enable uh, those sync to on, so I will listen to Zenbits, uh, transport controls, and then I'm going to select uh, a chord set like so and select the chords oops uh, select the chords like so drag and drop them there you are now if you close it and you click play and of course it's, it's playing and uh, it stopped now but if you double click again on scalar 2 you can have looping on like so and let's click play okay so that's one way to use to use it if you try to record now um it will not record anything i stop and as you can see there's nothing recorded now, another way to use it is actually, let's click and hold here and um, so that we can uh, uh, get rid of the instrument and select the delete. So let's uh, click on the plus sign and select instrument, but this time let's go to ZC1. Okay, and let's close this. Let's choose uh, a different uh, uh, preset. Let's go to, for example, piano. Uh, like that um, let me try again so let's choose piano there you go and let's go and choose this bright light let's close that now when you have this open click here and select the MIDI effect and then inside here choose scalar control 2 like so so in this case we are using it as a MIDI processor we are using scalar 2 as a MIDI processor so let's do the same and um, let's select uh, do sync to on like so let's choose a chord set and uh, drop that like so and close that now you can still play But next, what you can do, you can open up the property of that channel, select MIDI and remove the pre-MIDI effects. Okay, so that means it will record the output from uh, the MIDI processor. So let's try. Okay, let's stop. And as you can see, we have recorded now chord progression. So let's remove the channel properties. Let's double click on it. And now you can adjust the end point like so. And now you can play in a loop with the drums. So that's two ways that you can use uh, Scalar 2 as an instrument itself, but you cannot record it necessarily 
the uh, output from it, or you can use it as a MIDI processor against another instrument, like in this case, ZC1. And of course, you can record uh, um, the MIDI uh, coming out from the, that uh, NUV3 from the scalar chip. Of course, you can also add, um, for example, an audio track, and then inside there, of course, you could add an effect, and then you could uh, um, go and find um, scalar audio tube, like so. And then, of course, based on the output, which is coming through that audio track, you can then use the detect chords uh, functionality inside the scalar 2 to actually detect chords inside Zenbit 3. So that's uh, a nice, simple way on how you can use uh, um, scalar 2 inside Zenbit. Okay, now let's close this one and let's ensure that Zenbit is um, not running and let's load the garage band. Now let's go right back at the beginning and let's create a new song like so. Now let's, um, the first thing I'm going to do is to go to um, the external and choose audio unit extension. Okay, so this gives you the ability to select an audio unit extension and I found that the Scala Lighter 2 works better inside a garage band, so I recommend that you use that one. Okay, let's remove the keyboard and let's do the usual thing. So those sync on, like so, and let's choose a chord set. So let's go to blues, blues one. Okay, so that's one way. And um, if you click play. Now, if you want to record that, I recommend get rid of the metronome, but also remove the visual counting and the counting itself, okay? Because um, when the counting starts, you find that uh, a scalar tube will start playing already the code, so you don't have that in sync. So when you have done that, back at the beginning, you record. Okay, let's click stop. Let's go back to the track view. And you can see we have recorded that code progression. And then, of course, you can continue like that. So you can say, well, all right, brilliant. So let's go to Alchemy Synth. Okay, let's go back straight away into the track view, drag and drop that one which we already recorded and play together because uh, in this way you have Scalar 2 still playing the chords. And of course from here you could do a lot of other things, right? So you could um, add um, a drum track, why not? So let's try that, let's go to smart drums and let's click reset okay so let's stop and play let's go back right to the beginning and um, let's record and let's stop let's go to the track view and there you are so now you have uh, the um, tracks are also recorded for uh, um, for the drums and of course you can play together and if you want it to be precise if you know how to use uh, um, um, garage band you can do a split here like so like so and then go to the split there click again and then delete nice so now you have a clean um ending for your drum as well but i'll leave you to it this is uh, how you use scalar 2 inside garage band so let's um, close this up like so now next let's load aum inside of your aum you normally create an audio channel and then you select scalar 2 as an example as an audio source again you have the two selections scalar light 2 and scalar 2 i go for scalar 2 so if you use it like so, usual thing, you have those sync um, on, and then you choose a chord set, just uh, as an example, and um, play along with it. Of course, you can record the audio uh, from it directly here if you arm. You have the recording here, and then you can record directly the audio coming out from Scalar 2. So this is how you use it as an instrument. Now, let's click and add the MIDI channel, and um, let's um, 
say how we could use these with helium. Okay, so let's make the link between the two, like so. And then let's open up helium. Now, inside the helium, let's sync it and uh, hit record or to hum record and let's click play now inside AUM. That's one way and that you can record indirectly inside uh, Helium. And of course, you can change tracks. If you know how to use Helium, you can record multiple tracks going back direct to Scalar 2 and changing what is coming from Scalar 2. So let me show you now how to use these, for example, with Atom 2. Ex ex exactly the same thing. You select Atom 2, you create that connection uh, like so, right? And then you open up uh, Atom 2. Uh, perhaps you had more uh, uh, bars. Um, hit recording back at the beginning, play. And there you are. Okay, now let's double click and to select uh, the notes and hit the delete, go back right at the beginning. Now we have been using Scalar 2 here as uh, a, um, an instrument. Of course, you can do something different. So let's remove that one there. Let's um, use also Scalar 2 as a MIDI processor. So let's search for it. And uh, you should find Scalar Control 2. Let's make the link into Atom, uh, like so. And of course, we need to configure that instance of Scalar 2. So again, use your do sync on. And then uh, let's choose a chord set. Why not a cinematic? And um, like so. You can hear no song, no sounds now because it is a MIDI effect, but also because it's connected to um, uh, Atom 2, which is not connected to any audio source, as you can see here, right? So let's go inside uh, um, uh, Atom 2 and let's click uh, play. Oops, nothing is coming. So let's double check here um, the connection. So it is um, um, a recording state. Yep, and uh, let's choose this one here to have a looping on. Those sync is actually on. Yeah, that's perfect. So if I press here play, it is actually playing the chords. That is nice. So let's go back here and check the output here. Oh, okay, let's remove that. There is a circular connection here. That is why I was doing that. Okay, so now we are connected to um, Scalar 2, like so. That's where I made the mistake. All right, let's go back at the beginning and let's hit play. And you can see it is recording again from Scalar Control 2 in this case. Okay, let's stop that. And of course, you could remove that when you finish and then create another audio channel. Then have here Grand Piano 2. For example, connect that to Atom Piano Roll, stop the recording, back to the beginning and click play. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So um, the, remember, you can also use Scalar Audio 2 as well. So in order to do that, for example, what you could do, let's solo this one here. Let's decrease a little bit of volume. Let's open up, for example, a file player here. Let's um, enable loop sync and let's choose something like this loop here. Let's click play. That's perfect. And now let's add as an insert effect Scalar, which will be Scalar Audio 2. Let's open that up, of course, and let's maximize it. Hit uh, detect, change the threshold, and hit play inside um, AUM. And you can see the codes which are detected inside Scala 2, and which, of course, then you can save, for example, in your user area for further use. So that is how you would use Scala 2 inside AUM. So let's... Um, um, close that down and now let's open up Cubasis 3. Okay, let's ensure we don't have any track uh, uh, active. So I deleted them all. Let's go back right at the beginning. So how do you use Scalar 2 inside the Cubasis? Very simple. Click on the plus sign, add a MIDI track to start with. Go to the piano and uh, oops, and go up the hierarchy here, choose uh, audio unit and now choose uh, a Scalar 2 uh, instance for a UV3 like so. We remove the browsing, maximize it. Again, use your things, then enable all door sync on so you can control it directly from Cubase is free. Choose a code set 
and then um, drop that inside uh, um, the progression builder. And now hit play. So it is playing the instrument inside Scalar 2. If I try to record that, it will work as well. Really nice. And I can use these, for example, to, um, let's say, I add another MIDI track and I can drag and drop that one there. Then I choose the instrument there, for example, why not? Let's go for uh, tape strings like so and go back right at the beginning and press play. As an example, Scalar 2 will continue to play because it has its own instrument which are being played. So another way to use uh, uh, Scalar 2 inside uh, uh, Cubasis is to add again a MIDI track and then leave that uh, uh, piano, for example, uh, preset uh, inside there. So we are not going to change that. We'll leave that preset for Microsonic, of course. And then we go to Insert Effects, click on the first one, and here we go up the Iraqi audio units. And now we're going to search for Scala um, Audio 2, okay? So in this case, what happens is anything you record from... Uh, um, inside the, or play inside that MIDI track through uh, that uh, um, the piano from Microsonic will go through as an audio inside uh, um, Scala Audio 2. And uh, then if you enable detect and uh, adjust the threshold, you can um, detect the records and notes which have been recorded. So that's one way to do it. Okay. The other way again is to um, have an audio track again similar thing with the difference again you go in insert effects now is waiting for an an audio which you need to set up the right uh, routine for that um, audio sorry and um, then again you would add under insert effects uh, um, scalar to again as uh, a audio unit like so and then you continue like that and you have something which is being played, of course, in, through the audio track or imported into that audio track. And then you can detect, for example, chords like here. And remember to adjust the thresholds there. Okay. Another way, again, is to add another uh, a MIDI track. And then we leave that um, piano um, preset from Microsonic there. And we're going to MIDI effect this time. Click on it. And then we're going to choose uh, Scalar Control 2. So effectively, it's like using the MIDI processor inside AUM. So we are going to then uh, maximize these up. We are going to have uh, those sync which uh, will be on. Select a uh, code preset. Um, oh, this is quite long. So let's um, go right to the beginning in terms of selecting them all. Perfect. You can hear a plain sound anyway. Let's enable looping. And uh, right back at the beginning, play. So effectively, uh, Scalar Control 2 is sending chord MIDI messages to the piano preset of Microsonic, and therefore you hear the notes being played. Now, if you try to record here, nothing is being recorded. The reason is that you need to go inside Scalar 2 and set the record track. And try again now. Okay, perfect. So you can see how now uh, media events are being recorded. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial on how to use Scalar to inside different products and different those. As always, see you next time. Bye.